So the last two that we had talked about early on to, to discuss with this were speed and the controller on the tool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. were, were also challenges. So I, I'm assuming speed is the, uh, is it, we're not talking the RPM or the, or are we talking the speed of being able to get everything done? I guess they kind of go hand in hand. Yeah, I was going to yeah. say they, they may tie in together yeah. a little bit more than you think. Um, the, the speed of the RPM of the tool uh, a lot of times directly affects the how quick you can get your, your job done. And uh, that's, <laughs> guess, that's what the operator wants. Stick it on there. Yeah, that's right. Exactly. It might be great, but it's really slow. <laughs> Depends on the tech time of the application and how, how many products we need to get out of that cell within a certain amount of time, whether it's minutes, hours, whatever it is. So, yeah. so controller on the tool, I see right here the uh, the core. That's the cell core, right? Yes, sir. Yes, so sir. that has a controller on it. So, is that a controller? So there's, there's really two. Uh, so that has a double meaning. I see what you mean by that. So both with core and tech, you can program stuff on the tool, okay. right? Um, basic stuff, not not advanced uh, what we call linking groups and things like that. But you can do basic rundown programming on the tool. Much more, uh, I would say, much more widely used on a cell core type tool. Um, but when I'm saying controller on the tool, uh, the first one to really do it uh, was in Germany, right? There was a there was a company in Germany to implement uh, controller on the tool, um, but what we typically see is, you know, the, the very advanced manufacturers, and I'll just say uh, high-end motor vehicle manufacturers in, in Germany, all okay. right? Um, some of those guys are willing to take a lot of risks as far as uh, new technology. Um, but what happens is once those things get proven out, uh, they end up making their way into the other regions, right? Um, not to say that they're further advanced, but it is more of a risk taker on technology. Yep. So what I'm saying by that is, um, you know, we're going to talk a little bit about controllers later, but, you know, the way a controller works today is, and the way I always try to explain it to people is, you know, you got the controller on the wall, and the controller tells the tool what to do, right? The tool tells the controller, here's what I did, and then the controller tells the plant, here's the results, right? Here's okay. what happened, All right. right? Very high level. What I'm saying is controller on the tool the tool is talking directly to the plant now. Okay. So the plant, or the tool might be might know what to do, right? Um, you can program it to know what to do. Uh, but the tool is no longer talking to the controller, it's talking directly to the plant in plant language. So when you're talking about the controller or the tool knowing what to do, you're talking about the, the exact amount of torque or yeah. the, ex the exact distance or yeah. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, I mean, you know, and what, what we do and what we can do is is we can scan a VIN, right? A, a VIN on, on a vehicle or a serial number on a, you know, a washing machine, right? We can scan that, and when we scan that, uh, the controller or whatever, um, but the, the controller will tell the tool, okay, this is a XYZ uh, vehicle, and it will say, do 10 newton meters. Okay. And then as another vehicle comes down, it, you know, you scan that VIN or, or serial number or whatever, they'll say, okay, no longer 10 newton meters, do 15 newton meters and run this application. All right. So it brings a lot of versatility to the tools, uh, especially when you start, yep. you know, app selecting with with, uh, with barcode scanners or location tags and stuff yep. like that. And I'm sure a lot of that reporting that goes on with the communication will tell you the length of time that's been in service, how many how many times it's done its revolution uh, of a particular application, and then you know based on uh, your knowledge of the tool, you can educate customers that like listen when right. you hit about this line in the field of the number of you know applications that it's been through or however you whatever you call it yeah um, when it reaches around this area of service life. You, you need to either bring it off, let's rework it. Some maintenance and, needs to be done. Yep. Yeah. Maintenance yeah. needs to be done because yeah. the, the more you utilize a tool, some of some of the tools that my dad still has from the from the eighties, 
still weren't fantastic, but he's taken really good care of them, you know? Yeah. Now you buy a tool. They, the joke is at the big box stores that you know, now I'm buying throwaway tools. You know, you don't expect it to last that long. You expect it to last for a few years, and then you're going to go back in and buy it. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. You know? So taking care of these is just as important, you know, and, and knowing knowing it's it's life expectancy before it needs uh I mean can these tools be we have repair centers yes. at Air Power. Hundred percent. You know, does yep. do we work with Clico on our repair center? So we or, do, yeah. The Clico tools we can repair in house. I believe we have some stipulations in place for warranty items. Yeah. Okay. Um, warranty items do have to go back to uh, Clico for okay. repair. However, anything outside of that warranty item, we do have the capability to repair in house. And and that's where the customer has to make that decision, right? Yes. Yeah. Like, right. You know, what's it going to cost? And you know, I know we have rules in place. Like, if it costs over a certain amount of money, which is a pretty low amount. If yeah. it's going to cost over this, we're going to automatically put a hold on it and and yeah. approach customer and say, it's going to cost X, we estimate, to fix this, so you need to make a decision. So And those rules are flexible. We, I mean, we're able to tailor those to each customer, and our service shop does a uh, tremendous job of communicating to the customer, hey, this is the quote to repair your tool. This is what a new one cost. Yep. Uh, we advise or not. We advise replacing, or we may just say, yeah, it's worth repairing. So, yeah, it depends too, because you know, again, I had mentioned earlier, uh, you know, capital budget spending, right? Oh yeah. Um, and every company is going to be different. Our company is going to be different than, than anywhere else too, right? On what we say, okay, we need to capitalize this amount. Um, but if they, you know, if they do initial buy of fifty tools or something like that. And then it goes into the maintenance guy. Now it's his budget that he has to decide, do I repair the tool or do I replace the tool? Right. And I think we'll probably see an upswing of people repairing stuff rather than replacing um, in the future too, I would think. Yeah. Well, don't you think the also the engineering and the quality that's gone into some of the tools will change that as well? Yeah. It, it's going to impact that yeah. for sure. For sure. Okay. Yeah, and I think that's where... Clico to, to give them a little plug here, and we're, we're sitting here with them. I think that's where they kind of lead the market. Oh, right? yeah, 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 yeah. I've seen their testing facilities um, for their tools, whether it be the Neotech spindles or Cell Core, Cell Clutch, uh, Cell Tech. Uh, and they truly test them the way they advertise they test them. I mean, you walk in and you see tools being run down continuously for a million cycles, I believe. Oh, yeah. 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 So, 